fifteen thousand years ago, a yogi appeared in the upper regions of Himalayas. Nobody knew where he came from, his antecedents were completely unknown. So people gathered around him because he was such a phenomenal presence. A large group of people gathered like this. They expected him to say something, do something. He did nothing, he said nothing, simply he sat. If I simply sat here for two hours, I can imagine. Within fifteen minutes, those people in the last few rows, and they will slowly, still there is time for the cinema, let's go. If I said nothing for two hours, ninety percent of the people will be gone. If I said nothing for six hours, only a few hardcore ones will hang on, rest are all gone. Same happened to him. He said nothing, did nothing, simply sat still. Not for a day, not for a week, for months on end, he simply sat still. Everybody was expecting a miracle, nothing happened, he just sat. But they were missing a most fundamental miracle because the nature of your body is such right now, you're well attended to. You had lunch in the afternoon and maybe you snacked in the evening and so that you don't fall asleep, you had a coffee and maybe you have something in your bag. <laughs> so many things. All these things are being attended to, so this is fine. Suppose we just make you sit here for four hours. Sadhguru, at least some water. Okay, drink water. After drinking water, can we just sit here, Sadhguru? That one? Okay, do that and come. Sadhguru, okay, if you give this, the next one, no permission, <laughs> this will just go. Or in other words, what you call as a body is a series of processes. Only if you're attending to them, it's fine. If you don't attend to it, then you see what a trouble it is. When you do not attend to the body, if you are hungry or… why all that? People say, how long one minute is depends on which side of the bathroom door you are. From inside, somebody says, just one minute. Outside, it's one eon, <laughs> okay? So because this is the nature of the body, if you do not attend to it, it will become so compulsive and get you into such big trouble. But here he just sat. He neither ate, nor drank water, nor went to attend to nature's calls, simply he sat still. People could not even make out whether he's alive or dead. The only sign of life was, off and on, tears of ecstasy were dribbling down his cheeks. Otherwise, he simply sat unmoving. Then only seven people hung on. They realized the miracle of him sitting here like this. Because if he has to sit here like this, he has transcended physical nature, otherwise you cannot sit like this. These seven people hung on. Today we celebrate these seven people as the Saptarishis. These were his first disciples of the Adiyogi. So this Adiyogi just sat there, these seven people showed interest. He told them, this is not for you, this is not entertainment. But they said, no, we're willing to do anything. He gave them a few preparatory steps. They prepared for many years. Then one day when the solstice was shifting, just now we shifted from summer solstice to winter solstice on December 22nd. It'll again happen on June 21st and this coming June 21st uh, is significant, significant for the world because this is the day when Adiyogi first gave his turn south and gave his teaching because the sun turned south, he turned south and started explaining the mechanics of being human. On this day, fortunately, the world, uh, the United Nations has declared the World Yoga Day because the yoga began on that day. <laughs> this incredible process of exploring the human mechanics went into the process. This predates all religion. When there was no religion on the planet, fifteen thousand years ago, 
he went into the mechanics of what it means to be human. And various aspects happened. He opened up one hundred and twelve different ways in which a human being can attain to his ultimate nature. And uh, when people asked, especially his wife Parvati asked, why not more, why only hundred and twelve? Then he said, if you are rooted in the body, there are only hundred and twelve possibilities. If you transcend the body, how many atoms there are in this universe? That many doorways are there if you're willing to explore it. But if you're rooted in this body, there are only one hundred and twelve ways. And the whole yogic system subscribes to this even today because nobody has found more ways. Any number of yogis have explored in a million different ways, but there is no other doorway. In this body, there are hundred and twelve ways into which you get there. So for this, how to generate this, how to make this work the way you want it? So this whole mechanics, he started Adiyogi explored for many years and he gave this elaborate knowledge to the world and then asked these seven people to go in seven different di directions in the world. One went to Central Asia, another went to North Africa, another went to so South America, another went to Southeast Asia, one came down to what we call as the in Indian part of Himalayas, one stayed with him and one more who is very important for us, Agastya Muni came down south. He is known as the father of southern mysticism because he did not spare a single human habitation south of the Vindhyas. In the Deccan plateau, he made sure every single human being who lived in this place had some sense of spiritual process.